Alright guys, it is a cloudy, dreary day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and there's some reports of, damn it, go get the squirrely, give up on that dog. Uh, some reports of uh, tornadoes blowing into Texas here. Not sure they're going to be out here in Garfield, Texas, uh, but I don't know. The wind is picking up here under this dead uh, cotton tree looming over my uninsured house. So uh, we will see uh, what today brings. Oh yes, but my name is Sam Mitchell, and this is <clears throat> Collapse Chronicles. You hear the little uh, the, the little squirrel hound has the squirrel trapped in the pomegranate tree. Sancho! Oh well, he is having too much fun chasing squirrels today. So anyway, <coughs> it is, what is <coughs> today? Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. And uh, so I am back to trying to find news about the collapse of a planet that does not ha <clears throat> have anything to do with the C word. And I actually uh, <coughs> some, somehow, thanks to you, my Alert Tribes members, have come over to this site called Science Alert. ScienceAlert.com and I finally have found uh, a source of news about the collapse that does not talk about the C word. So we're just going to give you two of them. Okay, how about hurricanes could be slowing down due to rising CO2 levels and that is not a good thing. No, it's not. Scientists are warning that an increase in global warming could significantly slow down hurricanes, potentially leading to even more destruction. While slowing down might sound like a good thing, the researchers are talking about the speed that the hurricanes progress, not the wind speed inside the hurricane. So this slowdown means more time to carve out a trail of destruction with both wind and rain when they hit land. The start warning <coughs> is, is based on meteorological data collected since 1950 as well as readings taken on more recent storms from the last few years and forward projections created by computer modeling. Um, for example, in 2019, Hurricane Dorian produced gusts of 183 miles per hour, but advanced forward at just a handful of miles per hour. That means more time to batter properties and people and to ditch more rainfall across a smaller place. If future hurricanes continue to follow the Hurricane Dorian pattern, they are likely to be just as destructive <coughs> or even more so. <coughs> this is climatologist Gan Zhang from Princeton University, quote, our simulation suggests that future anthropogenic warming could lead to a significant slowing of hurricane motion, particularly in some populated mid-latitude regions, which includes New York City, they say down here later. This is the first study we are aware of that combines physical interpretation and robust modeling evidence to show that future anthropogenic warming could lead to a significant slowing of hurricane motion. Close quote. Uh, <clears throat> Hurricanes in Asia 
and North America along the latitudes close to New York would be most affected, the models suggest. Uh, yep. Anyway, I think we get it. So, but we have that one, and as long as I'm over here at Science Alerts, this is the one that I really liked. Uh, <clears throat> becoming a parent makes you 25% less environmentally friendly, new research finds. No, becoming a parent does not make you 25% less uh, environmentally friendly. It makes you more than 100% less environmentally friendly. I don't know how many times we need to go over this, folks. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to go back into the same rant about how having just one more child <clears throat> is a bigger uh, kick in the pants <clears throat> to this planet than, uh, than anything else combined. Uh, anyway, we're just going to stick. I'm going to try to shut up uh, and let science alert <clears throat> uh, point out this ridiculously underestimated headline. Becoming a parent makes you 25% less environmentally friendly, new research finds. It's not unusual for parents to worry about the next generation and the future planet they will inherit. Uh, yes, it is very unusual. It is uh, obviously, it, 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 is, uh, it is very unusual for, for parents to worry about the next generation and the future planet they'll inherit because if they gave it five minutes of thought, they wouldn't have any kids. They wouldn't be parents. I promise you, I was not going... All right, I'm really going... All right. It's not unusual for parents to worry about the next generation and the future planet they will inherit, but new research suggests having children does not necessarily make you any greener as a person. Quite the opposite, in fact. <clears> hmm. <throat> a new study... <laughs> A new study in Sweden <coughs> has found that even those who really care about the environment <coughs> often end up having their deck of prioritize reshuffled by the realities of parenthood. After all, there is only so much time and energy available in a single day, and children have a way of sapping up a lot of those limited resources. Comparing adult parents to adult non-parents. I don't know, I guess they left out non-adult parents and non-adult non-parents. This is only looking at adult parents. Comparing adult parents to adult non-parents in Sweden, researchers found Households made up of the former, meaning the adult parents, tend to emit more carbon dioxide from transportation, food, heating, and electricity. Wow, you really need to have a scientific study to reach this conclusion. Yes. Ultimately, the team found two adult households with children two adult households with children were responsible for over 25% more carbon emissions than two adult households without 
children. Quote, this is just quoting the report, don't have an author's name. Our findings suggest that having children might increase CO2 emissions both by adding to the population and increasing CO2 emissions from those choosing to have children. Close quote. Wow. While adding an, another human to the planet in this day and age will inevitably increase carbon emissions, especially in wealthier nations, by how much exactly is still up for debate. And currently, only a small fraction of adults choose not to have children because of <coughs> environmental reasons. This means there are many parents out there who consider themselves to be quite green and who list the environment as a top priority, even though their behavior is not quite matching up. Huh. This is uh, uh, economist Jason Shorgan from the University of Wyoming. I don't know if he was part of this study or not. Quote, becoming a parent can transform a person. Yes, it can. He or she thinks more about the future and worries more about future risks imposed on their children and progeny. But while having children might be transformational, our, resu our results suggest that parents' concerns about climate change do not cause them to be greener than non-parent adults. Close quote. This is, this is some really, uh, you know, you really need to be a rocket science to follow this. <clears throat> This is one of the first rigorous studies on whether, beherent, whether parents behave greener than other adults, <clears throat> but it's still an open question and the current findings will need to be verified in other nations and in larger sample size. Uh, this is based on an impressive 4,000 Swedish Households across all major household expenditures, the, the findings reveal a substantial gap in carbon emissions between parents and non parents, especially in regards to transportation and food. The results might be surprising given how accepted climate change is in Sweden. The nation has a sizable carbon tax that many people are happy to pay, but it is a good reminder that even with the best of intentions, parents can sometimes overlook the bigger impact of their actions for more immediate concerns. This isn't to say it is entirely their fault. It may simply be about time and energy, although this is currently just one theory. Yes. Uh, reports on time usage in Swedish households reveal that out of all people, imagine this, parents with small children have the least leisure time, that could be making a big difference. Yes. Uh, carbon intensive goods are usually convenient and cheap, the authors note, which makes them particularly tempting to parents. Yes, when you're juggling the demands of a family driving to the grocery store, might be simpler than taking public transport or biking. Yes. Uh, and, right. Did you realize the world 
is not about to stop having children. Wow, now that is a science alert. The world is not about to stop having children. Alert, alert. So policies that alleviate some of the stress parents with young children are facing could allow families the time and money to better reduce their carbon footprint in the future. Yes, I am sure. Uh, anyway, so what about the children? Quote, children may of course also be concerned about the environment. Yes, I am quite sure. Which in turn may affect household consumption. Yes. Uh, but even though children in the Nordic countries have been found to be more environmentally concerned than their parents, there still is a substantial gap between their attitudes and actions. Close quote. Yes, while the research took place in just one country, the authors think their findings are relevant to many other nations around the world. This is uh, economist Linda Thunstrom, quote, If we are finding these results in Sweden, it's pretty safe to assume that the disparity in carbon footprints between parents and non-parents is even bigger in most other Western countries. Do you think so? But anyway, all of this talk about uh, driving a gas-sucking vehicle to the grocery store to buy some red meat is getting me hungry. Tornado blowing in, so I need to wrap this up. Uh, go rescue that poor squirrel out of the uh, pomegranate tree and uh, head to Bastrop, Texas where I am heading, I am going to buy two more air conditioners to add to the already existing air conditioner for the buyer of this house. He wants three, this is a single man, he wants three air conditioners in one house. Little dog, are you going to leave that poor squirrel? Let that squirrely get out of the pomegranate tree. <laughs> anyway, get out there and enjoy your pomegranates while you still can. Bye, guys.